Welcome to an amazing show. We have a woman that's a prophet, a visionary, Marie Masferrer. She's going to talk to us about how to make our world better, how to improve our education, how to help our children grow. She's going to help us through a process that will get us excited to fight the forces that are against public education. Learn about this. Stay tuned for a great show. The number one way you're going to find a predator for your child is going to find a predator is in a messaging system in an app, Minecraft, Fortnite. Really? That predators are coming at kids and with the laws that they're trying to, to put together, the librarians and, and FAME and ALA, we are all trying to get legislators to listen that there should be a law. If you are under the age of 13 using a game, there should be no messaging system as part of that game. Well, welcome. Wow, I, what an incredible story. Marie Masferrer, right? Is that yes. how you pronounce it? Yes, sir. Amazing. Uh, you, you work in libraries. What do you call that? Uh, a library media yes, specialist. specialist. That's the fancy name. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you what, you're my hero because you're always out there uh, campaigning for the truth, for the community, and we just need more of that. Now, don't, you, don't you agree? We definitely need. We need people showing up for every school board meeting, especially those who can make the 10 a.m. meetings. We're still lobbying for a, a five the clock start time for every school board meeting so that teachers can attend. But yes, if if you want books in your libraries right. and you want your children to have the best education, show up to the school board. We have to prove that there are more of us who want the books on the shelf than want them off the shelf. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. We put up on the, the, the screen a, okay. a, a lot of information. I know <laughs> well, you're That would take a, a long time to go flame. through all that. Okay. Um, FAME is the Florida Association for Media and Education. They um, have been my support and backbone for more than uh, 15 years. Uh, my first three years in a library in, in Manatee County, I wasn't allowed to join. So, really? I, yes, I actually was told no by a principal. So I left that school. And now the school no longer exists. So that should tell you something about not joining FAME. So you want to support FAME. Um, my time as a board member, they actually recruited me saying, you can just go to Tallahassee once a year and have a great three days up there lobbying and telling our story. And everything blew up. So I was the legislative chair for fame when the laws were being written that we're surviving right now. You're a journalist originally trained? I started out as a journalist, yes. And a, 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 you were a teacher in elementary school? Is I started correct? out as an elementary teacher. I, I, um, I actually taught at SCF, so I've taught from uh, first grade all the way to adults. Wow. And my time as an instructional technology specialist, which is what my degree is in, I taught teachers. I would actually go into classrooms one of my greatest claims to fame in Texas the day before we left, I installed my first smart board in a tiny little town called Lufkin, Texas. Okay, so how do you go from journalism to teaching to library? library. Well, um, as a journalist, I was incredibly bored. I worked 3.30 to midnight at the Waco Tribune Herald. Well, bored until the Davidians decided to shoot at my husband. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. I was, I was there during the, the when the Davidians were there, but... Um, I actually asked my father, I said, what did you like about your job? And he said, everything is different. Um, and actually, I would say I received a call to teach. My parents said if I became a teacher, they would not help me with my education. Right. They did right. not want me to be a teacher in, wow. any, in any form because they're both teachers of some sort. Um, and so when I um, decided to return um, my plan to school, my plan was to teach second grade for 30 years and retire. But as I was teaching the part of my degree of instructional technology, I found that I could help teachers. And part of being a media specialist is making lives of teachers easier with curriculum and support resources and also with the technology. Do teachers come to you and they ask, well, I've got this project. I want to do, what do you have that could, could help with this? Could is that what you it, support Yes, it? or I would like to use video. Can you help? Like I've done clay animation projects with, with kindergarten or I've taught spreadsheets to first graders. So I bring in the technology pieces that help engage the students, um, and also to help the teachers. Like if there's um, a tech skill that they'd like their kids to do, we don't do that through a lab anymore. We actually teach it through how does, reading or science. You know, I, I know why you're here. I know what's got you a lot of attention, and we're talking books and we're talking libraries. Children today, I mean, uh, my youngest daughter is a teacher at Manatee High School and uh, had a big issue uh, not long ago. And apparently every child in the class has a cell phone. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking most, I, I, look, I'm old guy. So I'm old school library. I even went to law school. We had books. Now they don't use that. So no. you got libraries. Then you have Google and access to all kinds of Everything. weird things, porn, this, yes. that, and the other. Yes. 
And they have these in the school. What's yes. the big deal? What's the difference between the library and some of the books that are being banned and versus their access? And I was asking, and my wife said, why do they have cell phones in schools? Why do the parents, and they say, well, my, my daughter said the parents demand it. Mm -hmm. So they allow their child to have a phone, an iPad, access to the internet on some horrid uh, things, but they have a problem with the book. It, explain this to me, how, why libraries are important or what's going on with all this? Well, I, I think first you have to look at the state of public schools in Florida. Okay. I do believe this is a concerted effort and a documented strategic effort to um, reduce the trust in teachers, librarians, and our public schools. I think okay. it's part of the plan that our schools become completely You mean chartered. Cochran, and who was the Secretary of Education, now who's running... Uh, uh, was Manny the liberalized, Diaz. yes. Ma Manny Diaz, and, and well, I, I believe every Republican all the way back to Jeb Bush has looked for an end to public education. I think they're trying to get the public money, money into money. their pockets, right? It's they're creating money. charter schools with the it public your, money and, and kicking back. Does that make sense? It does, and that's okay. exactly what they're getting. Um, as far as the books go, I think a big issue for parents is they can see it and read it in a book, and what is on their child's iPad or cell phone is right in their hands. They're not seeing it. They're not accessing it. They're not aware of it. And kids are using apps and talking through apps and, and gaming systems that their parents aren't aware of. A big thing that I deal with, even at elementary school, are kids chatting. I mean, find a predator for your child is going to find a predator, is in a messaging system in an app, Minecraft, Fortnite. Really? That predators are coming at kids and with the laws that they're trying to, to put together, the librarians and, and FAME and ALA, we are all trying to get legislators to listen that there should be a law. If you are under the age of 13 using a game, there should be no messaging system as part of that game. But, because kids think they're just talking to someone inside a game, right. but that's where the predators are finding them, through things that are made for them and are geared for kids under the age of 14. So you think the library is a better place to get information than if they have access to their phone, an iPad, or whatever, Google search? Now that... Now that, in, now, that instructional tech degree is going to tell you no, because that, that is, a, that is the biggest advantage that our children have over my generation is they have access to more information in any time in history. But not always accurate information. Not always accurate information, but I will tell you this. My 10-year-olds can spot fake news on the Internet faster than anybody over the age of 40. My students. Yeah, but, but can I stop but you there? It's also because they have a library. Well, well, uh, that's what I was going to go with because I've had guys say, I made my, I created my this, and they could, I said, they're not as smart as you. They may not have the opportunities you have. They may not have the education as you had. You can't just put everybody in the same class and expect them to, fa you know, ex get fake news. One of the things I was really concerned about I, when I was a, a child, you know, we get bullied and I, I could go home and I, the bullying stopped. But now it's extremely it's true. they're bullying, you know, through the phones, the and you know, which the schools allow, and they can get this horrible information. They can get bullied. I mean, uh, how does that? And, what's well, your opinion and, on and that? And I, I tell, I tell my eight, nine, and ten year olds that it's going to speed up when they enter middle school. But yes. Guess who has control of that app? And guess who has control of the technology? I said, guess what? You won't die if you delete TikTok. And of course, my ten year olds go, <gasps> no. But so they, you're saying you have control. Over what they're watching and seeing on the I, phone I or believe iPad. parents need to be more involved. Look at the phone. Have your passwords. If you don't have passwords to your children's phones and they won't give them to you, you need to ask yourself why. It's the same thing I tell kids about banned books. If someone wants to ban a book, you need to ask yourself, why do they not want me to read this? There's a reason you're, they don't want you to read it. How do you justify the, the difference between uh, controlling what, 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 what a child does with, with, their, with their phone and their iPad or the computer and a book? I mean, th these people, uh, the religious wrong or the religious, uh, th are, are getting involved, in my opinion, the national religious ideas, that they want to control and manipulate what's going on in the library, but they seem to not give a hoot about what's happening on their iPhone and their computers. And let's face a fact, there is no porn in a school library. There is porn on that phone. So what should you be more concerned about? Taking care of your, your child and what they're looking at there. And also, there are parents who are okay with their children, teenagers hopefully, of accessing porn. There are parents, I, I hate to tell you, but there are. And I'm sorry, but one parent does not have a right to tell another parent what their child can and cannot access. I can't tell them how to, to teach their children or what they have access to. 
I have had parents come to my library and say, I don't feel this book is appropriate for my child. Excellent. Let's find a book that you feel more comfortable with for your child. But am I going to take that book off the shelf? I may read it again if a parent objected to it and see, is there something that I should be aware of that I wasn't? But I'm not pulling it off because the next parent may want their child to read that book. Why are you so ginned up and excited and (laughs) passionate about about this book canceling or banning that that, that the governor and— we, the right wing or We live in the United States of America. Okay. And in the United States of America, we have the First Amendment. And our forefathers chose to put the First Amendment first over the Second Amendment. We have mm-hmm. the ability to express ourselves, to say what we think. And guess what? Never in the history of the world has anything written in a book changed. Changed a mind? Yes. But has created destruction? No. I actually had a Baylor professor say to me, we had to deconstruct the Bible at Baylor, and there were many Baptists in there who who put it as a sacred document, and you're not allowed to touch it. But he said, you know what? If I say anything in this classroom that shakes your faith and your belief, it wasn't strong to start with. So if there's a book that you're afraid of, you need to look back in the mirror. You need to look in the mirror as to what you're afraid of. I've always said, I'm going to just say it, though, you know, when I meet people that are wearing their religion on their sleeves, they're, they're condemning other people, I say, hey... Be careful. Those are the ones that aren't that close to God because good Christians, good people of faith, they don't have to tell me they're people of faith. I can see it. You can see it yeah. in what they're doing. Exactly. And also, social media and what's happening in the Internet is a perfect example. Someone who's been vilifying me and calling me a groomer and saying I'm for the sexualization of children walks up and shakes my husband's hand as if she said absolutely nothing. Isn't it amazing and, and how they hide behind a Hide behind screen. a screen. Right. And right. I said, you know what? Let, let's put our ideas on the table. Come forward. And continues to say that there is porn Put your name out there and show how stupid, ignorant, or racist, or backwards you are. That's what I like. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, just own it. At least you own whatever your beliefs are based. And it's from an educated point of view in any way. I, I believe so. So, um Tell me about this uh, Moms for Liberty and the folks that are that you're seeing uh, quite a bit of in, in this well, attack against books. Well, for the um, for the record, we do not have a Moms for Liberty chapter here in Manatee County. But right. make no mistake, there is a playbook out there. It is written as to the steps you take and the books that you attack. As soon as a book appears on Book Looks, you will see it challenged across the state of Florida. Well, listen, this is fantastic. We'll go, we're going to get right back to this in just a second. This is amazing. Thank you. It's, it, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ah, I guess we're back. We're talking about Moms for Liberty. What an organization. Uh, <laughs> tell me I, more about what you know about them and what... what I, I uh, don't think you want to know what I think about them. <laughs> well, well I'm sure I do because but, I probably agree. Well, I will, I will tell you this. Um, one of the co-founders, she's recently left the group, is right on our Sarasota school board. Ziegler, um, right? Ziegler. Um, Bridget Ziegler uh, helped found uh, Moms for Liberty, but now uh, they are actually... The state of Florida, the Department of Education, is looking to revamp the library training that's required by law. I've had um, numerous members of fame and uh, parents that are involved in um, efforts to get books back on the shelves. They applied, but we found out just this last week that two Moms for Liberty members are on the board. And just for the record, Moms for Liberty is an identified hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Really? Yes, they have been identified because of their attacks on LGBTQ materials and also um, People of color. Any what, book what, that has to do with people of color. What is their base of, uh, where do they come from? Are they religious, right, um, it's national politics? Or what, it's, what is it? It, it? What do you think they're from, the, the basis of the, the folks that are members? Well, I believe it was started as a pact to gain money to push an agenda through the Republican Party, especially For the here school, in Florida. For the, the school issues. That as, far, as far as school issues, I believe the book banning... Part of it was to sow the distrust in public schools because their entire focus and Bridget it's to Ziegler destroy is, public education is to destroy public education. Because Charter if schools. They, if they destroy public education, then they have an elite system where only private schools. And if you can pay for education for the charters, it would apply to those who can get in or who for, can for, afford for to me, travel. For me, I, 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 I've always believed it's about money for the political class. If the R's control Florida, which they do. And you create these charter schools. And I know this firsthand with Lincoln Middle. They came to us and said, if we uh, hire a company to run the school, and of course that company is going to pay the political class in Tallahassee money, you get public money 
given to the political class in Tallahassee, which are ours now because they control it. And that's how you can get all that money that is designated for, you know, for the public education. And a lot of it now can shift to politics to pay them off. Cochran right now at the university here uh, is a million dollars. I mean, I think it's three or four times more than the original uh, the president of the school. It's just a payoff. It's corrupt. It's dirty. And it's the worst thing I've seen here in our county. And we're still fighting it. And we have um, really, really, uh, it's, it's really disgusting. Well, it's un-American in and, every way. And let, since we have so many divisions politically and religiously, let's forget politics and religion. Let's talk tax dollars. Like, do you want your money going directly to children to educate your children? And especially if you're a business owner, do you want them to educate your future workforce? Or do you want those dollars shifted into hands to become a, a money grab? And really, it, they're using it as if, as if the public schools were a lottery for every business in the state of Florida. Absolutely. And they're all getting paid back in some kickback in some form. And you get that by moving in position. So True. I guess you get term out of government, like you're a Speaker of the House. Next thing you're doing this. Next thing you're president of a university and you're getting all kinds of money and kickbacks and it's, it's pretty. As, as they say in Florida journalism, follow the money. There you go. I, I, there's a lot of shadows in, in, the, in the Florida sunshine, yes, I like to yes, say. There you know, yes, there are. Yes, there are. Okay. Ma, uh, read, on, read on Manatee. Uh, your founder, what is that all about? How did that come about? Well, it came about because I'm the former librarian at Nolan Middle School. Okay. I had parents and students emailing me when they, when they covered classroom books. And I've been gone from Nolan for seven years. But it made it back through friends of friends of friends. Uh, but there were students crying the day that Manatee County required classroom libraries to be covered, which they thought they were erring on the side of caution, which we like to say err on the side of education. But the students were extremely upset. And that is the, um, that's the culture at Nolan. They love to learn um, ever since R. Dan put his name on the door. Um, he was an incredible person who supported education. And... The students were upset. They said they even wrote letters to the principal, please bring back our book. So that was step one for me. So I went to the school board over that. Then um, someone sent me pictures of the Nolan Library, and right. I, I sat down and cried because my pictures from just five years ago show, <laughs> sorry, I actually saw the number. You can actually do a search of how many um, titles are available in circulation. And because I wanted to be a Florida Power Library, which is a designation and honor in the state of Florida, um, I knew that I had 9,000 books there when I left in 2017. They have 4,000 books now. We're, we're fighting for democracy, aren't we? But, we're fighting uh, for democracy. We're fighting for freedom. Yes. The ability, like you were saying, a parent should be able to educate their child. And, it, and if only 82 titles in Manatee County have been designated as pulled off the shelf, how does one school eliminate $800,000 worth of books in five years? And so I started Read on Manatee with parents, community, and students. Please, students, find this. Find this video. I believe if we had teenagers and students out there protesting with us at the board meetings, it would make all the difference. Because Absolutely. I can speak all that I want, but I'm not a parent and I'm not a kid sitting in the seat. And it is about student rights. And that's why I started the organization. We have a Facebook group. Um, and an email. You can email me right. and we'll probably have a public page soon. I'm working with the Florida Freedom to Read Project. So we're trying to provide resources for parents How do, and how do they find out information uh, from uh, Read on Manatee? You go readonmanatee at gmail.com um, or they can join our Facebook group. If you do go, I do have a vetting process. So you're going to have to answer some questions <laughs> if you want to be in our private Facebook group. And no, school board members and journalists are not allowed. Sorry. But I will answer all journalism questions who come to the Gmail account. Let's talk about this Parental Rights and Education Act. Uh, what is that? Uh, HB 1557, right? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, it is the muddiest piece of legislation I have seen in my lifetime. Okay. And, it is, and it is strategically vague so that we could have this, what, what the governor says, we overstepped our bounds. Activists have overstepped their bounds. They set it up that way, and now they're gaslighting to say we never meant for books to be pulled. We never meant for so many titles. We never meant for so many challenges. And I truly believe because the school boards in the state of Florida have a very good lobby, right? and I believe they went to the governor because this is costing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for school districts to defend. 
we estimate through the Florida Freedom to Read project, we estimate that every for each book challenge, it costs a district between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars for each book challenge. And there is a man in Clay County who is challenging three hundred titles a month. He has in and it's it goes from the Rainbow Fish. He's challenged the Rainbow right. Fish. He's challenged Wonder. Wonder is a book about bullying for middle school. We're going to go through, so, I think, in the next the titles, uh, segment, we're going to go titles, through all the titles, but, but tell me more about that act. So how did so, it come about? What was, What's the meat and potatoes of it? In- the meat and potatoes is parents have rights to choose what their children read. And guess what? They always have. Well, well that's what I was going to say. <laughs> so what's have. changed? I mean, what, what has changed is the state of Florida is saying that there are inappropriate books in our system. And I truly believe it came from the Florida Citizens Alliance and Moms for Liberty both. If you're not familiar with Florida Citizens Alliance, look them up. They actually started the third degree felony law that is there. Basically, librarians, anyone who hands pornography to children can be charged with a third degree felony. I'd love to know what pornography is. Well, and the Miller test, which is a a Supreme Court decision, it still stands. It's what high school librarians actually consider as when they're choosing sexually explicit books or books for the teenagers in the high schools. They're looking at the Miller test. And basically, the Miller test says you have to read a book in its entirety. Guess what has not happened with the 82 titles? I think I said 81 before, but it's 82 titles in Manatee County. Not a single one has been read in its entirety. So you have to read a book in, in its entirety. And if there is sexual content, it is um, part of the overall liter- literary work. What we consider, if it, is, if it is pornography, it is there as a purian interest and is there for sexual excitement. So we've had books that have been eliminated in the state of Florida that address sexual assault. What Sorry, do they have to do with anything? but sexual assault does not meet the level of pornography unless you're excited by an assault. Well, so, how, about, how about this don't say gay uh, stuff we're talking? I mean, we hear all the time. It, it boils down to that. Is that well, this legislation? I was, so gl- I, w- I was so glad that um, there was a recent settlement where it's not extending to businesses and, and, and a government. A day or two ago, right? But we have lost, yes, a day or two ago. Um, but we have lost fabulous educators, and I've lost um, colleagues that just said, I'm not staying in a state that treats me as if I'm subhuman. Um, And Manatee County librarians were told by the former superintendent that anything that mentions an LGBTQ character had to be pulled off the shelf. Totally erroneous. Uh, the, The law states that we cannot teach sexual gender identity or sexual orientation. There is a, there is a, a lawsuit, Lake County, there were parents who sued the Lake County School District to say that they had removed uh, LGBTQ materials and that violated their child's rights. The Department of Education actually submitted a motion to dismiss saying the school district got it wrong. The law doesn't say anything about um, library books and it does not apply to libraries. And this is two years into us pulling LGBTQ books off the shelves across the state of Florida. But what it was, was the Department of Education knew they could not win that lawsuit, and it was a violation of rights. So they put in that motion to dismiss, saying the school district got it wrong. Same thing in Manatee County with the classroom libraries. When they covered them up, the governor laughed and said, what are they thinking? They're playing political stunts, whereas the entire school board is either endorsed by Ron DeSantis or they're all registered Republicans. But yet he's saying, so I actually wrote to our school board and I said, how do you like the tire tracks on your back? Because you did the governor's bidding and covered up classroom libraries. Oh, they and they love said, him. And, and, and then he calls you an idiot. He calls you out and laughs and, and says, you don't know what you're talking about. So stop playing political games with our children. Stop playing political games with our libraries. These books that are being pulled, the ones in Manatee County at least, I can name three out of that list of 82 that should be considered by committee. But in Manatee County, there's only one person who decides the fate of a book. And that's the school principal. Really? That's the new policy. The new policy actually gives a choice. You can start a committee or the principal can decide what to do with the book. But what, what is, you know, okay, I'm, maybe I'm weird. I'm an attorney. I'm unusual. I'm combative. I'll fight. I'll, you know. Why is, are so many people willing just to quit and give up and, and not say this is immoral, this Please. is wrong, this is un-American, this is unconstitutional, go to hell. I'm not going to give up my constitutional rights for you, Mr. Elected Official, and and you fool, ignorant person. They don't do that. Why? Why? And how about librarians who won't stand up and say, not for my kids? I told my kids. (laughs) Why? I've asked them. 
I have had what I consider to be friends cut me off and not answer a single question because they know I'm going to fight to the death. I told one of my kids, they're going to haul me out in handcuffs before I give up a single book in this library. But why won't they stand up to tyranny? Why won't you stand up to tyranny? Why won't you stand up to a Hitler, a fascist, a right-wing fool that is going to extremes? Because they consider it a small step. It's okay. It's just this one book. It's okay. It's that book. But I'll tell you what, the librarians who have stood up, and there is one in Manatee County that I praise her every single day because she has fought and fought and fought and almost lost her job. They've received death threats. I have friends who have gone to the sheriff asking, not in Manatee County, but I've had friends go to their sheriff saying, I had in a public meeting a man say he's going to drag me behind my truck. I want a protective order. I want to file charges. No, we can't do it. You know, so we have people, that, and that's one reason they've heard of these stories of people's lives being threatened, their families being threatened. I received a death threat just after standing up in a school board meeting. And, and, and so that is, that's, but you have to ask yourself, where does it end? If well, I don't stand up, who's going to say it? Is this the United States of America or is this Hitler, Nazi Germany? Is this a totalitarian government, a fascist where are we going in this country? We'll be right back with, uh, uh, we're gonna look at some of these books that are okay. so evil, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Let's talk about public libraries. Okay. I, I know we're doing this in the school system. What's going on with the public libraries in these fields? Well, public libraries thankfully are public and they are uh, up to the parents' discretion. Um, in Manatee County, I think one of the most shocking things is the public library disassociated. I'm not sure if, if you don't have a child in the schools, uh, children's ID numbers are actually their library cards to the public library. That has, okay. been, that has been severed against without asking the school board and without asking the school district. So if your child goes to check out a book on George Washington, if it's an adult biography, right. they're not able to check it out unless you physically go to the library and fill out a form. So children no longer have full access to the public library. Um, recently, the governor came out and said, we are disassociating all links to the American Library Association. The ALA's current president had some unfortunate comments that were made on social media. Just for reference, I'm coming back to the governor and asking when there's a new president of ALA, which happens in June, are we going to change that stance? Because what happened was is it trickled down. When the governor said that, then Manatee County started saying that they needed to disassociate from the ALA. So did other counties around the state. Because she was leftist. She was leftist, and I think it was, there were socialism and Marxist statements in there. Okay, um, give, also, up, give, up, give up your Social Security, then you're not socialist. Give up your Medicare, then you're not socialist. I hate hypocrites. <laughs> if you're willing to give that all up, then you can take that stance. That's not socialism. We paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard that too? Yes, I oh heard that too. Oh my God, are people stupid? I tell you. Sorry, I just hate to, I hate to say, there are morons and stupid people, and I, we're getting stupid. I don't know. But, Maybe I'm the guy. I don't, I don't you know. What, you know what we need to do? Okay. We need to read more books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, education. Um, well, right? and the thing about the, uh, the, the ALA, number one, we receive discounts. When you're a member of the ALA, right. you receive discounts on materials that, are, that the library receives, but also our librarians receive support and professional development. It's one of the few organizations that public librarians can receive quality professional development. But the issue is our joining forces and joining together. When librarians talk to each other, we might figure things out. We might actually have support among ourselves and have power among ourselves so that we know how to handle issues and information. Like we could have seen um, with more support at the national level, we could have seen what's happening in our counties now. We could have seen it probably two three years before the laws were being written in Tallahassee. But honestly, for anyone who has any doubt about our public libraries, especially in Manatee County, go to them. Say, I'd like to speak to the librarian. Introduce yourself. Um, Some of our librarians are being targeted at the public library. They're actually being called out as being um, groomers or sexualizing children. It's not what librarians do. It's not who they are. It's just not in our vocabulary. We are there to provide support and information. We are the information queens and kings, and that's really, we seek to help people in whatever form they need. I think indifference by people, by librarians, by, by, the, by the public is what's going to bring our downfall. We, we all have a responsibility to, to be active and, and, and change and make our community better. Democracy is always under attack. I think we are a very unique nation. We're, we're not, my, my wife said, uh, uh, she's from Columbia, she said, when... Uh, I said, Hillary Clinton got uh, three million votes more than Donald Trump. 
And she's not president? She looked at me, I said, well, you know, she's not president. Well, I thought you were a democracy. You're not a democracy. If, 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 if you get more votes and you're not, I said, the system is skewed that way for, you know, anyway, uh, we're, we're almost <laughs> a democracy. The, we're you're, almost. Uh, yeah, Try so explaining that to the electoral college. We're people. still trying, <laughs> we're trying to get there, but yes. it requires hard work. It requires education. It requires us to always be fighting against the darkness of the of the right, I don't want to. Say, I don't well, want. No, there's good conservatives. Don't get me wrong. What? Well, what I like to remember is in 1776, with all that was wrong with our country in 1776, and you've heard that term over and over again. We all want to go back to 1776 when I had no rights, right. when I was chattel. Yeah. But that is correct. Because <laughs> was it 51 it times in the Constitution? His, him, nothing but, about a woman. But at the yeah. same time, our founding fathers wanted a literate. Electorate, and that is when the public school system started. And the whole purpose, the whole movement of becoming a country was not to have a king and a queen, to not have a, an elite. They wanted everyone to be a part of the system. And Benjamin Franklin started our first library so that everyone could be literate and everyone could have access to the most expensive materials on the book on the world at the time, which were books. And that's why we have libraries, is to democratize. And I'm sorry, if you... I don't care how you vote, red, blue, purple, or if you stay home. Please don't stay home. But Well, stay, I, stay home for, if you're not educated. But if you don't believe one person, one vote, what country are we? We are not the United States of America. Oh, we're, we're if you Putin. don't if, <laughs> we're, Exactly. We're Putin's Ru it's Russia. We're, exactly. So if you do not believe every single person 18 years or older has the same right to vote as you do, and you don't believe that the person with the most votes should walk away, then... What are we doing here? Let's talk to us about some of the books. Okay. Uh, what have been banned or, and, and, and define banned because, you know, I've heard people say, we, we don't ban banned. anybody. We don't ban any books. Yeah, what does banning mean? Uh, banning is when you reduce access to the books. And so if books have been pulled off of school shelves, you have banned a book. So even it, though it is available in a grocery store, a library, a public library, or a, um, a bookstore, and you can go buy it, some people do not have money. Some people do not have gas money to get there. And that is why these books should be accessible to all children. I think it's ludicrous of the titles, some of the titles that you see here. But So talk to them. Right. I mean, like, like the Penguin. What are we talking uh, the about? The Penguin books. Actually, And Tango Makes Three is pretty old. It's from the 90s. And it's a true story from the New York Zoo. The New York City Zoo had two male penguins who... <gasps> we became oh, friendly. No, they, two male <laughs> penguins took care of a chick that had been orphaned. So they put, the mama had died, and so the zookeepers You're put, kidding me. No, I'm not. It's a true story. You're kidding me. This, this is what they're banning because two males banning. took care of well, one? Well, and also, nothing in this book. If you read this to a six, seven, eight-year-old child, it's two penguins that take care of another penguin. Is it labeled LGBTQ? Yes. It has in the, in the ISBN information and the Library of Congress information, homosexuality and... But where LGBTQ. does that come from? Because there's two males that take care of a chick? It's because two That's males. It? it does show that they're friendly. Like, they they stay in the same hut. They swim together. They eat their meals together. So It's it no does, sexual. It's it's not. Well, no. Male penguins don't have sex with each other. But <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is banned because it's two male penguins that are living in the same you zoo and taking care of a chick. So that's it. Tango and, makes three. And a child is that sophisticated to know that? Oh, my they, word. But also, this is the case I referred to in Lake County. This was the book that Lake County went to I wonder what Bridget over. Ziegler thinks about that. She <laughs> must. She must uh... My favorite sign at a protest at the Sarasota School Board meeting is someone showed up with a sign that says, I may be gay, but you're a hypocrite. So, <laughs> Welcome this, to America. This, huh? this, this is Bunch true. of hypocrites. And this I red? actually put in the face of a, a Tallahassee lawmaker because he was on the book ban. He actually was responsible for the bill that you named 1069 and I believe it was 1557. He helped to write them. And this was one of the first books that was pulled. This is a book about kindness and being yourself, being who God made you to be. It's the story of a red crayon who actually colors blue. And he's <laughs> no, trying, you're, you're he's trying to fit in with the other crayons. You are joking. I'm not joking. They I'm banned not, this book. They have banned this book in the state of Florida. And God I forbid. took this to Tallahassee with me. And I said, it is about a crayon. I did. <laughs> I mean, it's about a crayon. It's a you, children's you book. You are kidding. They, they, these but, morons are doing this? But, but he, let me tell oh, sorry, you. I'm sorry. But let me tell oh, you. Oh, my God. This is called a grooming book because they do not believe God made LGBTQ people. They're fools. They believe you somebody, can pray it out of them? 
You, well, they believe that somebody read so many books to them that they turned gay. <laughs> and this is one of those books. Because being yourself and being a full, whole person as God created you. That's a brilliant That's, that's a brilliant book. I'm a red crayon, <laughs> but I color blue. I, it's I love about that. kindness. I should have thought of that. It's about kindness and respect for each other and for the individual to be the full person that you, you are. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding These are you. fools. <laughs> I do, the people are doing the banning. Have they read the books? Do no. they know what they're talking no, about? No, they have not. They cannot have they read them. They are taking phrases. And if you look at the challenges across the state of Florida, they are phrases that have been put up on Book Looks, which is a right-wing po- propaganda piece put out by Moms for Liberty. Say, when it, we call it the hit list because as soon as a book goes up on their website on booklooks.org, and we were told as librarians we should use that to vet the books, that's not a reliable source. In my business, okay, we call Moms that for fake Liber- news. Uh, in the United States of America, nothing happens without money. They have to <laughs> be they in raise, there for money. They raise $2 million in their first month. Oh, there you go. They put $2 million in their coffers. I'm against, has- I'm against red crayons coloring blue, and I need $2 million. This is brilliant. I should be a pastor as well. Now, go ahead. What's, what's this, this one? This joyful book came to, this ban- book banning came to us from a man who got tired of the lockdowns in New York, and he moved to where? Florida. So he comes to Florida, and he files 300 challenges. This book is an incredible book about a young man who, and he doesn't have a face because he's, he suffers from facial dysmorphia. He is born where they have to do multiple surgeries. And this book was the first book of the author. It also was made into a, a movie. It's a major motion picture with um, Wilson. Owen Wilson and Julia Roberts play the parents. Um, but it's about bullying in middle school. It's made for grades uh, four through eight. So it's, a, it's middle grade fiction. And it's basically about how to be a friend, how to stand up for each other, and to stand up against bullies. Okay, what was but the problem? But he said, he said, it has to be a conspiracy because there are more copies of this book in the libraries than The Cat in the Hat. The reason is this book is less than 10 years old. The Cat in the Hat is more than 40 years old. So more kids are reading this book than The Cat in the Hat. So About, the libraries have that's more. That's the reason? No. But, well, what he put down on the challenge form is that there's violence because the kid socks a bully in the face. So it's violent. We can't have this book on the shelf. The hell, I tell violent. my kids if they get bullied, go beat the heck out of that other guy. Come on. I mean, don't you? I mean, what kind of a kid this is not going to defend if, himself? If you want an excellent book for your children in this those is grades, it? This is it. that is a phenomenal I, book. I'm, I'm, I promise you, as God is my witness, if there is such a thing, I will buy that from the kids uh, that in my household. <laughs> I, I swear. Because that's a beautiful story. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love the crayon. I yes. really, that, listen, I love the crayon book, man. Yeah, because that's what, you, you know, I like that commercial, draw outside the lines, be who you are. Yes. Gosh, that's inspirational. Yes. That's what we're supposed to do, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, be, yes. the, be the red crayon that colors blue. I love, that is genius. Oh, go ahead. Well, oh, right. Slaughterhouse well, Five. I know, Henry has a thing for Slaughterhouse. <laughs> Henry, what's your thing for Slaughterhouse Five? What's about? I, I just made the point that my seventh grade teacher, which was a long, long time ago, 1969-ish. And you remember the book. Was, that was something I did a book report on. And it was okay to, to read that. In fact... But what was it about? What do you remember? I, I remember later? the protagonist was actually taken... It was, he was in Dresden, so it had... It was um, interspersed with scenes from Dresden and the firebombing of Dresden... So it was anti-war and probably fit in the whole anti-Vietnam war. But it was also science fiction, too, in that the, he was taken by aliens and put on exhibit for a while. And it was, uh, for for me in seventh grade, it was a little tough to follow, but eventually it, it, it the came thing together you for me. About, what's that? The, the centipede uh, thing? Or oh, what the, 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 the aliens can see another dimension. Right. And where we see three dimensions, they see time also. And so they can see, for example, you as little baby CJ, and they can also see you as old man CJ, and everything in between, so, uh, your your it's state dangerous. of being is like a long centimeter, just legs from the little baby CJ to old man CJ, and, you know, you're you're probably more towards one end than the other. And you try and live most of your consciousness in the best parts of your your life. Okay. So, and, and what do you get from that book? What do you remember? Do you remember? I'm just curious because you read that in seventh grade. You're. I, I thought bit that was a pretty me. interesting way to think about your life. And actually, not uh, I'm, I'm not sophisticated in the theory, 
But I know that string theory and a lot of the theories about physics now, he wasn't too far off about stuff. What do you think? No, that's true. Book? That's true. Well, Slaughterhouse Five is a classic. And we don't usually say that these days because classics were chosen by old white men. But Slaughterhouse Five <laughs> is one of well, it's one of those books that we are all required to read in high school and, and uh, college. Is it tough? Yes. Are there tough subjects? Yes. The anti war theme means anti government, right? You're like people protesting the war were anti government. So that meant that they weren't part of, of that. But I mean, and it has violence and sexual content. Would you give it to an 11 year old? No. Would you give a seventh grade? Yes. And that's the other thing. He read it in seventh grade, whereas some school districts in the state of Florida have put this at high school only. But yet it's readable and relatable in seventh and eighth grade. And seven, and that's the other thing we've talked about, about children, is infantilizing children and saying they can't handle things when okay. yet their so, world so, is so, so huge. I was right. a very have, precocious seventh so, grader. So, so, so we have movies, violent, Marvel movies, yes. death, destruction, sex. They all watch it. The kids are there. We have video. We have access to all this. But we can't have a book. How about the Flamer or, or well, I Am Jazz? Um, Flamer, well, um, I think you guys have heard the, the discussions of Beloved. I still believe Beloved okay. is challenged because it is, um, it is people of color. I mean, there is sexual content in it, but I believe it's targeted because it's Toni Morrison and uh, being a person of color. If you look at the list of what has been challenged, and PEN America is the best source for that. They have every book that's been pulled off shelves in America. The majority of them are minority authors or minority characters or LGBTQ. It's it's completely obvi obvious. Flamer is a book I will go to my death defending. Um, I Am Jazz is my, in my library. It actually is the story of a trans girl. It's the author's autobiography. She actually had a TV show. It's nothing explicit. It's a read aloud and just talks about her journey as a child and how when she was a little um, when she was a little boy. She chose dresses and dress up, and she knew from when she was teeny tiny, when she was three and four years old, she always. I, I have a, a one of my best girls. friends, um, brother has a, had a little boy that I met when it was this teeny tall. Teeny tiny, was a girl. You you knew she was a girl. You knew she was a girl. She played with girls. She was a girl. Today she's at Berkeley, and she's a woman. She came on my boat. We went. And, and, and a, just an amazing woman. I mean, you would look at her. She's a woman. She acts like a woman. She thinks like a woman. She's a woman, and she started out as a little boy. Anybody that has a problem with that is a sicko. Well, this— I, I want to interject something because mm -hmm. this hits pretty yeah. close to home. I have a fr friend, good friend, and his oldest daughter, who was about middle school age, just about to go in, said she wasn't sure of her gender. And, and, you know, the, not talking about puberty blockers, not talking about any kind of interventional stuff, but she just asked, can you just call me by my name rather than she or he? Because I just, I'm not sure. And that was, they, they tried to help her through this and they went along with that. But wasn't there a law, I think it actually has passed in Florida, hasn't it, where someone outside the family can bring uh, a complaint against them, and it isn't even a civil suit, too, uh, if the parent seeks uh, treatment for their gender dysphoria for their child, yes. and yes. an unrelated person says, oh, this child is at risk. Is, can you speak to that? Um, right now in the state of Florida, as a teacher, and as especially it's on guidance counselors, we cannot refer to children as their we have to refer to them as their biological um, pronoun and name. Um, parents across the state of Florida, if they had a, a child named James, they had to sign a form saying, call him Jim or Jimmy. I, I, That's you know, how outrageous I, I, it is. I, I love Christian concepts. I met a, <laughs> I met a, I met a preacher the other day um, that I think embodied what I consider good Christian values. And we didn't talk exactly about this, but we talked a little bit and, and I think people of love and faith would accept everybody. Anything and, else, you're evil. And, well, and you're so, just and not so many families and children have left the state for that reason. They can't, well, receive, well, they can't receive the health care well, that, that they need. Well, that, that is a great point. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're a big country. 
and I know I was talking about this child, but she's raised where, you know, in, in, in out in the left coast, if you will. And you, you, sometimes some families are going to have to move from the repressive South to places where they, they have educated people. I don't Sorry. blame it at all. You no. have to do what you do for your children. No, absolutely. Um, the hate you give is one of my favorites. I hug it every time I pick it up and take it to a protest. Um, this book was not one that I read when it first came out. It's the first novel of Angie Thomas, which is incredible. This book and Palacio's book, The Wonder Book, to be the first novel, it's incredible. This is It almost mirrors exactly a police shooting in Minneapolis, even to the, the, uh, the torching of the neighborhood. But it was written about two years before that. But it's, it's police uh, shooting a young black man, an unarmed black man. And this was banned in Manatee County because it said it was anti-police. But there is a character in the book, her <laughs> uncle, God. well, her uncle is a police officer. And his character is there for the specific reason to say police officer, the, the uncle explains to her the pressure of being a police officer, the perspective of a police officer when they pull someone over. And if someone doesn't comply, that is all in the book. But why did they ban it? They didn't read the book. Hey, I was they gonna, couldn't I, have read I, the book. I, I was going to say that anybody that wants to ban a book, please read the darn thing. But and a, we should all read them, actually, yeah. shouldn't we? But all a, of these. But a black child who believes that police are out to get them, which... Anywhere in, the, anywhere in the United States of America where you have to have the talk, we have a problem. When uh, I know, think about the talk, parents of black children should never have to do that. And this book could also show that, that ch to that child, police officers are human. And the police officers who have been killed because of that hate, that's also in this book. I don't, su I don't support any police officer shooting an unarmed black man. But if we're going to talk about lives, let's talk about books saving lives in any hate form on one side of the issue or, well, this, or the this other. This goes beyond just blacks because, you know, I, in, actually in Minnesota, I have a practice there. We've got police officers fired for racially profiling and attacking Latinos and the immigrant community. It, the, the people lived, I remember the people said, we live in terror. I, I remember that like it was yesterday. I was at a church and we were talking to the immigrant community. We live in terror. We may not come home tonight and we'll leave our children. And this is in the United States of America. And, and these are the same people that are doing this are the same people that believe that human beings are not legal, which they are. And it's not even a crime, by the way, but that's another topic. But we, we need to stand up for democracy and the rights to educate ourselves. And no one should live in terror in the United right. States of America. The Flamer. Flamer um, speaks to my Christian background, and um, the boy is an evan raised as an evangelical Christian. He's a Boy Scout, right? And my father and brother are both Eagle Scouts. That, so that's it why the fingers like that's, that, right? That's yeah. the that's yeah. the pledge. I once knew the the Boy Scout law, even though I'm a Girl Scout. Um, but Mike Carrado, this is his life story. He actually was at a Boy Scout camp, was being bullied when he had a dream that he kissed a boy. So he wakes up going, "Oh dear God, I'm going to hell. My family's going to hate me. Everyone will desert me." So he decides to take his scout knife to the chapel at the Boy Scout camp to kill himself. Now, they think it's called flamer because he's gay. And that is a term that some right. use for gay men and gay people. It is called flamer because he has a spirit who visits him at the church. He has an angel that comes down. Now, it is my Catholic my Catholicism that sees it as an angel because he's also crazy about comic books. So it kind of looks like one of the comic book characters that's coming as his spirit. But Catholics know when you see a flame above your head, whether it's saints or icons or pictures, that is the Holy Spirit. And that is in, this is a graphic novel, and it's one of the last pictures, not in the book because it, it goes on beyond the chapel scene. But the last picture of the chapel scene is the knife is out of his hand and he has a flame above his head. And that's why it's called Flamer. Um, I will go to bat for this book for any child. This needs to be in middle school libraries because we have kids who consider killing themselves because their families tell them they are not okay. And the spirit that talks to him says, if your family leaves you, if all of your friends leave you, I'm still here and you've got me. Amazing. It's an um, amazing book. I, I would think that uh, the middle school in particular is one of the times in your life where everything's changing and you're not sure who you are, and you're not sure where you're supposed to be, and you have problems with weight, with your gender, you're being loved, you're being attacked, you're being bullied, and you need answers to your questions. And oftentimes parents, uh, they just be quiet, they won't tell you. They won't tell you about sex. 
You know, that's why you have teenage pregnancies and problems because they don't know that children aren't born with an instruction book, are they? And, and some of the worst people to guide, I hate to say it, are parents because they were also taught incorrectly. But we need this education. We need the books. We need a place where people can go to, and to, to think. And, yes. and how many conversations do those books start, whether it's any other trusted adult? If they can't well, speak to their parents, they can speak to a librarian, a teacher. You have enlightened me like no other way. <laughs> and I'm, I, you know... Uh, I'm not the strongest person of faith, but I think God has a plan for you, and you're here, and you're standing out, and you're a prophet. <laughs> you're here. To, no, no. You're, st you're, you're very rare, and you have a mission to save our nation and to save our children, and uh, God bless you. You're a wonderful human being. Thank, Thank you. you. You're Thank amazing. Thank you for having me. It's Thank a you. pleasure. At Zyalaw, it's personal. We understand that an injury can be a dramatic, life-changing event. That's why we're here to guide you through the legal process and get you the best possible outcome. We are the voice of the community. We work hard so you don't have to, to make sure the people get all the money they deserve after an accident. We are the voice of the community and we work hard to make you a winner. Our competent and bilingual staff will fight for you against the insurance companies and work diligently with providers while you focus on your recovery. There are no fees or costs unless we win your injury case. Give us a call for a free personal case review at 1-833-255-6697. At Zyalaw, it's personal because we care.